Hello, my name is Uthri Banerjee and I'm a theatre director and welcome to my Bush Theatre 10 minute masterclass. When thinking about directing plays, I thought it might be interesting to give you an insight into the very first step of any process for me. That is, reading. It's my job as a director to bring to life the story that a writer has committed to the page. But, obviously I can't tell all the stories in the world. So when I'm choosing a play to direct, there are a couple of things I need to ask myself. A. What story do I want to tell? B. Is the story in this play the right one for me? And C. Am I the right person to tell this story? Am I going to be the one to tell it in the most engaging, emotional and effective way possible? Or however many other E words you might want. So without further ado, let's go! What makes a good play is obviously such a subjective question, so here are just a couple of things that make a good play for me. So a new play arrives in my inbox or my postbox, or by carry pigeon, I don't know, and I know nothing about it, what other things I'm looking for? Well, one, do I want to keep turning the page? Number two, do I recognize things in the play from my own experience? Number three, probably the most important one, are there things that happen in the play, whether through the characters' action with each other or the events of the, of the plot, that make me curious and more interested in the complexity of being alive. The brilliant thing about theatre and plays is that they give you an opportunity to witness a whole range of experiences beyond your own time zone, beyond your own country, of people behaving in all sorts of different ways. And that really helps me broaden my experience and my empathy. I need to identify the things that are similar, that represent the communality of human experience, and get excited by the things that are different. If the play has both these things, then usually I'm hooked. Reading a play shouldn't be a passive experience. When I'm reading, I want something heart-stopping that makes me forget to breathe, that makes my stomach turn. Remember, the word drama comes from the Greek word for action, and even the word emotion has motion at the heart of it. It should move you, it should make you feel, and that often is quite a physical, chemical thing. A good play, a play that's right for you, is one that not only engages you intellectually, engages your head, but also one that engages you emotionally, your heart, and connects with you down here in your gut and makes you feel something visceral. That brings me on to section two. How do I read? So I really like to think of the first time you as a director read the playtext as kind of like an audience watching the production for the first time. It's quite a special moment, so I try to treat it with respect, like squeezing extra virgin olive oil from an olive. So what I like to do is I like to carve out a couple of hours in the day to read the play as if I were watching a performance. Watching a play takes about two to three hours, so I try and make sure I leave about that much time to read the play. Sometimes if I have time, I might even start reading the play at 7.30 in the evening. When I read, I like to read on hard copy, though of course you can read on iPad or on your laptop. But the reason I like to read on, on hard copy is because I like to annotate as I go along. Just really loose things, just sort of impressions or sketches. And one thing I really like to do is when I'm reading, I like to put the letter H for hot when I'm really enjoying something, when it's really grabbing my attention, when, it's really, when I'm really invested in the action and the characters and the plot. And sometimes I might put down the letter T. And the letter T means that I should maybe feel a bit like I want to go make a cup of tea. And that's not a bad thing, just maybe your attention is wandering. And often, in the case of a new play, it can be a really helpful dramaturgical indicator as to where the play might need a little bit more work. I try to be as honest with myself as I possibly can be. And often it's a really good marker at the end of the play um, as to whether I enjoyed it or not. If there are more H's than T's, then chances are I would have been quite engaged and quite hooked in the whole way through. Try it out for yourself, and of course you can use whatever symbols you might want to use. Those are just the ones that work for me. And the most important thing I try to do when I read is I try to read as generously as possible. Even if it doesn't automatically seem like my thing, I try and imagine what it might be like for someone else and how it could be their thing. Assume the best of the writer all the time. The three questions I often ask myself are, why me, why now, and why here? Why me? It means why am I the right person to tell this story? What is it from my experience and from my own life that relates to the material within the play? What parts of myself do I see in the play and what parts do I want to amplify an audience? This can often be quite a personal thing and it's often the thing that helps lead my cast and creative team through a process because they can see how it's connected with me and resonated with me. Why now? 
What is it about this play that speaks to this current moment? If it's an old play, why revive it now? If it's a new play, what is it saying about the world we live in today? By here, this becomes a bit more relevant when you're, when you're getting closer to the stage of thinking of putting it on and pitching it to a theater, but it's also really important. If I'm telling a US American story, for example, why am I telling it in England? much later along the line. Why am I telling it at this theatre? Why is the Bush Theatre the right place for this? One of my absolute favourite plays in the world is Othello by William Shakespeare. In regards to why me, I see a lot of my own family history in Othello. Obviously not the more brutal bits of it, but definitely the parts in which Othello identifies with the Venetians and sees himself as a member of the Venetian state. My grandfather, for example, grew up in British India and often wore trousers, for example, often ate with knives and forks. And although he didn't see himself as British, there was an element of my grandfather and his father's upbringing that did identify with the British. Of course, this is a massive simplification um, in case my mum's watching, but when I read Othello for the first time, I really empathised with how Othello saw himself as someone who was Venetian. Just as my family growing up in British, British India might have to some extent seen themselves as British. Question number two, why now the themes of racism have been shown to be erupting all over the world just in this moment with the murders of, death, of George Floyd and Benny Majinga and countless others? Questions of misogyny and patriarchy are all really alive today. In the Me Too movement, for example, and I think about Emilia's lines where she says, I will speak as liberal as the North. Othello is a play that refracts and changes based on the current moment that you live in. And that's to some extent what makes it a classic. A classic will always be a play that, to some extent, as Hector in the History Boys says, holds out a hand from the past to come forward and reach yours. Section four, if it's a new play, how do I go about speaking to a writer? When I have a chat with them, I try to ask them as many questions as I possibly can to try and understand where the play came from for them. What makes it personal for them? What sort of territory were they trying to explore? Which character came to their mind first? I try to use the time over coffee or over, over a cup of tea to understand the writer's intention, to understand what they were trying to get at and what really makes the play tick for them. It's a very delicate thing when a writer trusts their play to a director. It's a collaborative process and there needs to be trust in both directions. But you need to excite the writer to want to work with you and you need to earn their trust that you will nourish and cultivate their beautiful baby to light and in front of an audience in the most generous, sensitive and respectful way possible. In conclusion, there are four things I like to think about when I'm reading plays as a director. Number one, I try to read generously. I try to read stuff that makes me feel, that makes me move, and I try to see the writer in the best light as I possibly can when I'm approaching a text. I try to read carefully. That means to say I treat the encounter with the text when I first approach it as a precious thing, like an audience watching a production for the first time. I try to read personally. I try to find the bits of the play that resonate with me, that connect with my own experience, because those will be the things that I will then be communicating to an audience. Number four, I read collaboratively. I'm always conscious of the fact that, especially when I'm working with a new writer, that this is a collaboration and this is a labour of love that the two of us are embarking on together. I really hope you enjoyed this masterclass. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Othri Banerjee. Goodbye.